how to do lab 3 Coulomb's law, the prep. So I'm going to click on the template to open it up and make a copy of the template. File, make a copy. And it's going to get rid of the word copy of. And OK. Now I'm going to exit the template so I don't accidentally use it. So I'm just working on my copy. What I'm going to be working on today is the um, at the end making the hand-drawn graph. It's based on the data that I've collected here. Uh, it's the um, the r squared tan theta versus the q1 q2. And so what I'm going to do is yeah, in the I need some graph paper. So I'm going to go back to the Blackboard site. And up in Course Materials, I'm going to go down to Required Printing, and there's a graph paper link, PNG file. I could click on it to see it, but what I really want to do is download it. So right-click it, or Control-click on a Mac, and then choose Save Link As. And I'm just going to keep it the same name and save. And I can close it from here. I don't need it to keep it on my downloads. And then back on this sheet, I click in where, oh, sorry, where I want to put my graph down here, number seven. Click in there and then choose Insert Drawing New. And I'm going to add an image, which is my graph paper. And choose an image to upload. And there it is. There. Now I'm going to start with the title. So uh, I'm going to click on T for text, text box. And the title I'm going to say graph of, and it was um, r squared and to do a squared it's a upper caret 2 theta and then um versus q and then underscore 1 q underscore 2 bring it over, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to make those labels for the y, x and y axis. So I'm just going to make a copy of it. If I hold down the control button and drag it, that's one way to make a copy. Another, I could just click on it and uh, copy, click somewhere else and paste. And then I'm just going to uh, get rid of the first part of it. Get rid of that part and then rotate it. And if I hold down the shift key, I can get it to be exactly 90 degrees to go there. Move my graph paper a bit. And then I do, do the same thing control drag and then get rid of this first part. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter to be down here. I'll move it just up slightly. There. Now, for my first data point, and I can have this written beside me if I wanted just to, to remind myself, is um, I'm going to have the segments down here be um, 1.2, 1.3. So I'm going to make another little graph for 1.2. And then I'm going to put a little, not a, uh, it's not really meant to be minus. It's supposed to be just a marker that I can read it with. And I'm going to decrease the font size a bit. And I'm just going to hit this little minus, 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 minus. Yeah, there I go. And then I'm going to put that down here. And then once I've made one of them, and I've put it in its proper exact position,
close enough. Then I can hit control. And if I hit control and shift at the same time, then when I copy it, then I can, um, shift will make it so that I keep it exactly aligned. And so if I want to line it up here, then I can change this to 1.3. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm just going to pause and do a bunch um, so you don't have to watch me do it all. Now, another trip, trick I can show you is that you can uh, zoom. I've zoomed to 200 right now, so I can zoom into it. And then after you've made two or four or whatever, then you can hold down Shift and select them all. And then after you have them all selected, let go, hold down Control and Shift, and then drag a bunch more up. There. And then I can go to individual ones and then just update them. Okay, I'm going to pause again while I finish. Okay, I've got them all for uh, up to 2.1. That's where my data cuts out. Now I'm going to make the ones at the bottom. So I'm just going to click one of them, shift, uh, just actually control, and just move it uh, to the position I want. And I'm going to get rid of the, the minus. I'm not going to be able to put a, a marker in it, but I'm going to position it. And this one is uh, 1.00. Make it a little bit wider to accommodate that. And then um, after I have one of them, hold down Control and Shift and copy the next one. And this one is one point. Uh, um, one zero. Put it right in the middle. And then now I can select two of them and hold down control and shift. And then have one point click somewhere else, one point two zero and one point three zero. I'm just gonna pause it while I make the rest of them. There, now I have all the x-axis and y-axis. Now I can start to plot my data points. Now I'm going to put them in as dots. Um, so the first one I have is at um, 1.09 and uh, of Q1, Q2, and the, the uh, y-axis is at 1.2. And actually I just realized that I should get, on this title, I should get rid of the word graph of. And I also should put the units in here. And when I click in here, even though I want to go up because it's turned to the right, I'm hitting the, the right arrow key. And I should say that this is a meter squared. So M caret two, and then times 10 to the caret negative two. And the units for this one down here, the uh, x-axis, this one is um, coulombs. I'm going to make it wider so that it can all fit in here. Coulombs squared. times 10 to the power of negative 12. So um, my first data point, I'm going to use a circle. And it's at um, x-axis is 1.09. So it's about here and at 1.2. So it's right down here. Make that a little bit bigger just so I can work with it. I'm going to make it a different color. I'm going to make it uh, dark blue. So it's about right there. And the next data point is um, on the x axis 1.22 and 
and 1.4. So I'm going to hold down Control and drag a copy of this. And at 1.22 and 1.4 is about right here. And then the next one is 1.5 and 1.34. So I held down Control to make a copy of it. 1.34 is about here and 1.5. And so I'm just going to pause it while I put in the rest of mine. There, I've done all my data points. Now I'm going to not zoom in so much. I'm going to go back to uh, fit. And now I have to have the three lines. Um, so I'm going to use a red line to go in the middle. And so I'm going to click on lines. It's going to draw a line and change. Oops. I click on this arrowhead and then click on my line and I can change where my line is. So it starts at my first data point. I need to not have it go to the side. So I zoomed in again and I grab the, the line by the middle of the line and I position my center right in the center of the dot as opposed to the edge where it wants to go. And then I'm going to uh, zoom out again. And then I'm going to put the other part where I think it matches the center of all my data, which I think is about here. And then I'm going to color it red. There. Now my outer limit line, I'm just going to make a copy of this one. And I'm going to color it green. And I'm going to, while I'm here, I'm going to make the other one, hold control and drag it. It's already green. And then I'm going to zoom in again to 200% and get those, um, get them to be right in the middle. Here, I think I got to curve it. I'm going to start to curve it. So I'm going to move it this way. Now I can get it right in the middle. And same with the uh, other one. I'm going to move it the other way. And then get this point right in the middle. Now I'm going to zoom back out. And then I'm going to drag this to be the outer limit, which looks like it would end up about here. And then this one for its outer limit looks like it would be here. And from those, I can calculate my um, any other calculations that I need to make. And then save and close. And we'll add that to my hand-drawn graph.